There are six athletes in five distinct roles on board an F-50 in Sail GP. Strategist, driver, wing trimmer, flight controller and two grinders who make up the crew. Let's take a look at the role of the wing trimmer. What better way to learn how the wing works than on an F-50 with a wing trimmer, Florian Trudel from the Spanish Sail GP team. Florian, you got the accelerator in your hand right there and a few other controls. Maybe Absolutely. talk us through what you do. Yes, I've got basically two hands and both of them have to do different functions. So my role on the boat is to accelerate or decelerate the boat with our wing sail, which is standing up vertically on the boat. I've got my HMI, my human machine interface, my buttons to control the, the shape of the, of the accelerator in this case, and a joystick. No? And basically with these functions and with my hand with the sheet, what I do is accelerate and decelerate the, the boat. Who's got it right? Here we go. Oh, what a start by Botin at the top of the line, the only boat at full speed. He's hammering in fast here. Pedal to the metal when the gun went. Perfection from the Spanish. We've got the wind, which is, is always inconsistent. It's not always the same intensity, so we always have to be continuously adjusting. As well, we've got traffic, we've got other boats, so we have to avoid some collisions or whatever. No? And what my role on the boat is, is to basically give the exact power, so acceleration and deceleration in every moment so that we can go fast and, and, and freely through the course. And maybe talk us through how, how do you get that power? Obviously we know you've got these controls, we've got a rigid wing, um, but you make it, how do you power it up and how do you depower it in terms of like the, changing the shape of it? Yeah, so basically um, we could call it a V, no? Uh, the accelerator, the, the wing set in this, in this case, the more V shape we get into it, the more depth we get into it, the more power it will have. And then there's moments where you don't want so much power when the breeze picks up, for example, and you want to depower it. So we play a lot with the shape and angle that shape towards the correct angle of the wind. And basically I can show you how it's done. No, I'm pressing some buttons and adding that, that V shape to the sail. And you can see how it's starting to form and that's probably the most powerful V shape that we, that we can have. And obviously one also really nice detail here is that we maneuver, no? we go fr from one side to the other, the whole crew changes sides on the boat and we have to invert the sail no? because we, we get the wind flowing in from one side and then from the other side so we have to adjust the same profile but to the next side. No? Yep, so every time you, because um, you zigzag up the course, every ch you ch ch change from one zig to the other zag, exactly. <laughs> you've got to move it. So in a traditional sailboat, sometimes you see the big boom fly over and everyone ducks their head. We don't have that on an F-50, you actually just have to manually push it over. Exactly, and yeah, it's almost everything on this boat is button controlled, as we see, but I'm holding a sheet as well. And in a sense, yeah, essentially what I do with it is I can adjust the whole angle of the profile by easing it out or by trimming it in. It opens and closes like a door. Exactly. And it you need the grinders, like the grinders to need to close the door. It pulls a lot. It's a lot of load on it, so I cannot pull it by hand. I need the help of two strong grinders who can, through the pedestal, then trim it on and I can bring the sail to me. Close the door. So, obviously, it's a six-person boat. Communication-wise, you are holding the accelerator. How do you communicate to everyone else what you're doing? Obviously, the driver needs to tell you what they want, um, but then obviously, I imagine you do a lot of communication. Yeah, no, so basically, one of my biggest chats on the boat is about the speed. So when we're under speeding a little bit our target speed, then I would try to power up and we would try to communicate so we can speed up a bit. All right, come on out here, boys. Hold and head up. On the end, this is nice, but real nice, real nice. And then when we're slightly over speeding, which is also possible, we would try to under speed or drop the speed a little bit so we go closer to the mark. And, and yeah, at the end of the day, the wind is always shifting. We have to adapt by opening, closing the door, getting a, a flatter or a deeper sail, which is more or less V. And yeah, it's a continuous adjustment. There's so much happening as a wing trimmer. Um, what's the most difficult part? Probably one of the differences when you, now we're sitting here on the, on, on the buoy, you know, everything is calm, but when we're sailing these boats, actually we travel at, let's say almost 100 kilometers per hour has been our record. But it's not like getting the face out of the window of a car at 100 per hour, but also with, let's say, 40 kilometers per hour wind from the bow. Like so almost double, not quite, it's but almost yeah. Double. So that's you why get... you got your ski goggles on your exactly, helmet. Exactly, that's so you why I'm wearing see. my ski goggles. We've got the communication system because we cannot yell at each other at these speeds and some people are crossing on the side. So it's, it's quite hectic. 
and at the same time we have to be quite calm and, and cool to be able to be able to control it. Okay, keep it calm. Okay, stand by. Four down. Three, two, one. Turning. Okay, pressing. Pressing through, please. I would say the most difficult part is making it work in a perfect way with the rest, the, the rest of the crew, the other five members. And, and yeah, I think it's an art and at the same time it's, it's incredibly enjoyable. So yeah, it's why these boats are the pinnacle of the sport and we really enjoy sailing them. And when you're up on the foils and you're trimming the wing and the boat's tipping over, do, does it get unstable for you as a wing trimmer? You're kind of like up here in a vulnerable spot. It does get unstable and actually a fun fact is we're wearing these harnesses so we cannot fall over. We're attached to the boat so we can cross sides but we would never fall over and that's, that's one of the biggest safety features that the F-50 has and yeah, it just speaks for the, the risk that we also assume, no? but at the same time we try to find ways to not make it too risky for the athletes. The learning curve um, in any sport, you've, you've got to learn how to do it, but trying to learn this must be so, so difficult. What, what was it like for you as a wing trimmer? I would say the biggest challenge for me was getting used to sailing a boat with buttons. All concepts are very similar to other boats. We, we all come from other boats, no? they are quite transferable, but at the same time now we, we have to trim with a, we've got a display, we've got a screen that is telling us how much of a V-shape, how much of, of a power we have, which in no other boat we can see. We've got normal sails now. Sometimes you use your eyes, but here you use the data. And you, how much do you really look up? <laughs> I never look up, to be honest. I only look at the screen. And in sailing, in traditional sailing, you only look at the sails. So that's probably one of the biggest differences. And to me, I think uh, what has sped up my learning curve is trying to like, familiarize a lot with just using the buttons to trim the sails. And, and yeah, experience is such a such a big asset here for everybody, you know. And people who come new to the boat, I mean, we can see new teams that it takes some time to get used to sailing six people with new functions and making it work better than the others. Now, you also have some foot pedals, um, which give you some control. So you're playing with your feet, you're reading a computer, you're holding one hand and you're doing the other. It's like playing the drums and the piano at the same time. <laughs> Absolutely. Like the way I love to describe it is um, in specific moments out of maneuvers in this case. Um, I have to split my brain into four different functions, let's say, because with my right hand I'm controlling one thing, with my left hand the other one, and with my two feet on my foot buttons I'm controlling another function. No? So it's... Doing a dance. It was, <laughs> it's doing a dance and it was quite tricky at the beginning, but now I would even like to have more buttons. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously we've got this data screen here which is giving you so much information. Um, how does this information sort of fuel your decision making in terms of what you do and, and where is this information coming from and how do you use it? I think this is um, probably one of the most valuable information that we have in SailGP. You know, we've got our computer with exact information and then we've got our coach sitting in a coach booth and they have access to that same information of all teams. And sa similar to yeah, high performance motorsports as well, what we can do is compare the data of other teams with ours and at the end of the day, it's, it's going to make the league, it's going to make the sport way more competitive and also, yeah, better performing. So if there's another boat on the racetrack going faster than you, your coach in real time can come into your microphone and, and, your, like, and your headset there and Absolutely. say, hey, they're doing this, why don't you try that? Absolutely. Yeah. You think we're touching? No, I don't think so. No, Chris. And yeah. That's, that's, I mean, it's amazing for us because as athletes we normally used to, in this traditional sport of sailing, no, it normally takes a long while to figure out what the others are doing and here you can just see it uh, at a glimpse with, yeah, with the numbers that we are running on the computers. Well, I've really enjoyed getting on here and I hope everyone is learning a little bit as well. I know you've come off the water. It's a little bit chilly here, um, but we'll let you go and um, thanks for everything. Florence. Thank you. My pleasure.